Welcome to this audio presentation on using the case study material within your assignment for global marketing decisions. The Chartered Institute of Marketing case study is released a number of weeks prior to the assignment deadline and candidates will prepare material, especially the six page strategic marketing audit prior to completing the assignment, which was previously an examination for this module. This presentation will help you to understand how to use the case study material without making the mistake of accidentally plagiarizing the case study and contravening the CIM malpractice policy. The aim of this presentation is to discuss how to use the global marketing decision case study material within your assignment. As the assessment for global marketing decisions is an assignment with two tasks related to the preceding case study, it is important that you don't fall into the trap of using the case study words and passages in your assignment without appropriately referencing. We will also discuss plagiarism and how you might plagiarise unintentionally by not referencing the case or other sources correctly. This PowerPoint presentation is all about how to correctly use the case study material for the preceding case for global marketing decisions module. The presentation aims to help you understand how to use the case study material and the information properly. We will consider the different issues which could be considered as malpractice as identified within the CIM malpractice and maladministration policy. You will need to refer to this policy on my CIM website. We will consider the different types of plagiarism, ranging from direct plagiarism and paraphrasing plagiarism, some of which may be unintentional. We will then go on to discuss what is considered as plagiarism in relation to the long CIM case study material, which contains a great deal of information in written form and in tables. We will then discuss the ways to use your case study material correctly in your assignment and ensure that you are using the correct referencing approach, which is the Harvard system, which again you should use for all of your CIM assignments. This presentation has been designed to ensure that you complete your assignment well and that you do not fall into the trap of malpractice. Therefore, firstly, you should make yourself aware of what is contained within the CIM malpractice policy, which you will find on the MyCIM website. The policy states that malpractice is any act through which any individual has gained advantage and or threatens the integrity of CIM qualifications and all assessments and or their proper certification and or compromises the reputation of the CIM awarding body. You should note that studying CIM members, i.e. candidates or you, are responsible for ensuring that you follow CIM guidelines for your assignments. So you need to ensure that you know what plagiarism is and how to avoid it. You also need to ensure that you do not collude with your fellow colleagues or students within your work or college. So you should not prepare any answers together and use that work in your assignment word for word. You need to ensure that you do not impersonate another candidate or student. Only you must write your assignment. It has to be only your work. CIM is aware that there are some organisations who offer to help you write assignments for a fee. This is not acceptable as your work needs to be your own original work. Firstly, we need to consider what we mean by plagiarism and the different types of plagiarism which relate to the CIM case study. You may unintentionally plagiarise a case study by not understanding what plagiarism means or incorrectly referencing or not referencing at all. We will discuss direct plagiarism and paraphrasing plagiarism and why it's not acceptable. Firstly, direct plagiarism is where you take direct, exact, word-for-word -word text from
from the case and present it as your own work. So you might have taken a sentence or a paragraph from the CIM case without alterations and added it to your assignment without any reference to the CIM case study. This is not acceptable. You must ensure that if you do that, you reference it appropriately as a direct quote from the case study. Secondly, paraphrasing plagiarism is where you take ideas from another source of information or different sources which might include the case study using those words and you try to fit these passages together and try to pass it off as your original work by changing one or two words but without adding any references. You might not have realised that that is also plagiarism if you do not reference the sources or the case study that you have used. And now we will consider what constitutes plagiarism of the case study material. In some cases, candidates do not realise that they are plagiarising the case, which we'll discuss further. There are several issues which could be considered as malpractice relating to the CIM GMD case study. Some of these are not intentional, but this has resulted in contravening the CIM policy on malpractice. You should be aware that the CIM uses software to test for plagiarism called Turnitin. And as such, a report is issued for each submission or each assignment, which indicates a level of similarity to other sources. So if the similarity index is at a certain level, the CIM will investigate further to identify if your work indicates any form of plagiarism in line with the CIM policy. In some cases, the six page marketing audit included the case study material word for word, rather than discussing the case in context and demonstrating your analysis of the case study. This is not acceptable and candidates must reference the case using the Harvard system, if using direct quotes from the case study. Some sections of candidates' answers for tasks one and two included chunks of case study words rather than discussing uh, the insights and analysis. Again, this is not acceptable and you need to ensure that you show insight and use your own words at all time. Some candidates take paragraphs straight from the case study and only change one or two words to make it look like their own work. Again, this is not acceptable and will be picked up by the software and you will need to ensure that if you want to quote directly, then you must use the Harvard system. More importantly, it's far better to write your own thoughts and analysis rather than just paraphrasing the case. There are a number of issues which have been found in candidates' assignments, which could also be considered as malpractice. Most of these cases of plagiarism link to poor referencing. In some cases, key sources cited were not included in the reference or the bibliography list at the end of the assignment. Remember, the examiner will check your references and check that you have added all of your sources in your reference list at the back of the assignment. Some candidates just made the mistake of not referencing the case study relating to the data which he or she had included in their assignment. And in some assignments, there was clear evidence of collusion. For example, there were some identical paragraphs with that of other candidates within individual assignments and or within the audits found within their assignments. And again, this is classed as collusion and therefore malpractice. You should ensure that you write your own original analysis, showing your insights on the data and content found in the case study. This is a level seven module so you need to demonstrate good insight and critical analysis at this level. You need to demonstrate that you're analytical and do not just repeat the case study information. Therefore, don't repeat the case text as you will not have answered the task set. Remember, if you do paraphrase some of the case study material, 
you must use the Harvard referencing system correctly to illustrate where the information originated. This is very important and many candidates make the, this mistake of poor referencing. You must add the reference in your list of references at the back of your assignment. You already know that you should not cut and paste from the case study or any other sources, but it's worth stating here again just to remind you. Sometimes some candidates work together on analysing the case study, but you must not use prepared answers or analysis which you have worked on with other candidates in groups, as this is not your original work, but the group's work. This would also be classed as collusion and um, malpractice, which is not accepted. As we have seen in the previous slides, one of the main problems with candidates' work is that he or she has not referenced the CIM case study correctly when using information from the case. You must ensure that you use the correct referencing to the CIM case using the Harvard system. You should know the Harvard referencing system as you also use this for all of your other assignments. However, we will just briefly cover the basics here. Please ensure that you use the CIM Harvard system of referencing, a guide for tutor and students, which you can find on the CIM website. When making citations within your assignment, text taken from the case study must be cited whether or not the work is direct quotations, paraphrased or just summarised. The examples here show how to do this. For example, you would put bracket CIM and the date 2020 for the work taken from the case study, which has been summarised or paraphrased. You must remember then to add this reference to your list of references at the end of the assignment. The second example is used when you have used a direct quotation from the case. This is when you would use the direct words from the case, but you would put quotation marks around these words and state CIM brackets date and the actual page number from the case. Again, you would need to ensure that you add this to your reference list at the back of the assignment. Please do check the CIM guide on using the Harvard system to remind yourself if you are having difficulties in using Harvard correctly. Well, we're at the end of this brief presentation and I hope that this has helped you to understand how to correctly use the case study material in your assignment ensuring that you do not fall into the trap of unintentional or indeed intentional plagiarism and thus commit malpractice. Don't expect to do this assignment quickly. You will need time to research, analyse and write up your work based on the case study for tasks one and two and an organisation of your choice for task three. This is level seven work, so you need to ensure that you are critically analysing information and put in the best work you really can to achieve this and be a proud of it. Remember that this is an exciting opportunity for you to select the, the organisation for task three that suits your background and experience, so enjoy it. CIM really wishes you the very best of luck and hope that you achieve a very good pass mark.